Good evening and welcome to the weekly roundup. My name is Shell. I'm a secondary school teacher from London and involved with XR educators, XR art blockers, and XR talks and training. And over to Fergal, hopefully, who's with me. Hi, my name is Fergal. I'm part of the live streaming team. My day job, I work in energy transition, sustainability, and tonight uh, we've got an action packed uh, roundup. Uh, so we're going to start off with the uh, climate news. So, uh, first bit of news for you guys. The CE bill has reached 100 MP. In fact, it's already at 101. So this week we reached 100 MPs back in the CE bill from eight different political parties. In fact, we're now up to 101, as well as 77 allied organisations. It's been six months since the bill was first tabled in the House of Commons. And in that time, our following really has swelled. So we are ahead of targets and we're growing faster than anticipated, but we still need your help at home to spread the word about the bill. We need the public and parliament to bring us that step closer. So please continue to contact. I'm just going to shoot over to video explaining a bit more. A hundred MPs from across eight different political parties now support the CEE bill. Why is this bill so important? I'm one of the scientists to help write the bill, and this is what it's about. Part one is about reducing our emissions to keep planetary heating down to 1.5 degrees. This will minimise extreme storms, wildfires, floods and all the rest of it. Part two is about conserving and restoring ecosystems and soils, protecting wildlife and the places we love and absorbing lots and lots of carbon into woodlands and vegetation. Both make it clear that if products we import cause emissions in China or deforestation in the Amazon, we'll treat that as our problem and not someone else's. Part three is about how we make the decisions we need. The bill calls for a citizens' assembly to help government and parliament create the strategy to make it happen. People-backed, bold decisions, avoiding party political infighting, where people have a real say in choosing a fair path to a zero carbon society and a thriving natural world. Get your MP to support the bill. Our futures depend on it. So guys, please do remember as well, on Thursday the 26th of March, we have a UK-wide banner drop, banner drop. So please do get your banners out in force once again to back the Climate and Ecological Emergency Bill. Fergal, over to you for some more news. So uh, the UK government, in its wisdom, actually not wisdom, has uh, uh, is deciding to reduce uh, fuel duty, uh, that's aviation fuel duty on domestic flights making it cheaper to actually fly internally within the UK. Right? What we need to be doing is we need to be getting people out of airports uh, into uh, sustainable travel, right? And what this bill is doing, it's actually increasing footfall into airports. And also they're looking at expanding 20 airports in the United Kingdom. It's flying in the face of uh, climate science. So absolutely shocking. Uh, we <laughs> you couldn't make it up. You know, no, you, know. you can't. We're in a climate and ecological emergency. <laughs> Why not? I know. I know. Let's let's build more airports. You know, let's let's put more people on planes and make it cheaper. You know. So yeah. Um, and on top of that, some some good news is uh, finally the government seen sense. Well, not the government. It's uh, from external pressure of environmentalists have highlighted the Cumbria coal mine is flying flying the face of uh, climate science. So there's going to be a full review by the government about the uh, about the new coal mine, which is set to open, and it would be the first new coal mine in 30 years, right? Right at the time when the UK is hosting COP26, they they want to open a new coal mine, right, for uh, choking coal for uh, steel production, and the Committee on Climate Change, right, has actually highlighted the fact that by the mid uh, uh, 2030s they're going to actually have to close it because they won't be able to meet their own uh, carbon budget, the sixth carbon budget. So um, it's it's a result 
uh, it's actually shown pressure uh, is actually working. Um, but why on earth they wanted to, to reopen the coal mine is in absolutely crazy. And uh, just talking about greenwashing, uh, another result that's come out this week is the fact that uh, HSBC, the bank that likes to say yes, uh, is, uh, is under pressure now to withdraw funding from coal expansion. Okay, so just to give you a bit of a, a context here, HSBC is the second largest investor in fossil fuel extraction in Europe. Okay, uh, we're talking about tens of tens of millions, billions. Uh, since signing the Paris Accord in 2015, the world uh, financial institutes have invested 2.4 trillion dollars in new new fossil fuel extraction. Okay, so we got the likes of HSBC. That are fueling the fire and now due to pressure right for shareholders pressure they're actually reviewing it and they want to actually phase it out in 20 years or 2040 which is actually not good enough it's actually it's it's, it's crazy but what it shows though is shows that pressure uh, and pressurizing shareholders actually does work so everybody keep it up keep up uh, pressure uh, pressurizing and um, barclays as well uh, uh, HSBC and uh, let's keep on pushing them for more drastic uh, changes. Definitely. It's just astonishing <laughs> really when you hear all this stuff coming out uh, from the government, how this is going ahead. I mean, we'll speak more about it later, won't we? Um, so uh, we'll move on to the next section. Oh, sorry, it's about going. Well, no, I was going to say, yeah, no, it's, it's like we, 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 need, we need to... Uh, we financing fossil fossil fuel extraction you know so we need to keep the pressure on to pension companies and divestment and you know really everybody keep the pressure up and it actually shows that pressure and and protesting does work yeah definitely and also so, just to be aware very much of this greenwashing that takes place constantly so whilst it seems perhaps that it's a positive um step to, in the right direction Actually, a lot mm. of this, when it comes down to the big com uh, companies, is greenwashing. Absolutely. And speaking about protesting, you know, so uh, you're you're involved in um, uh, you've had a very weekend and uh, out in the streets, and I think a lot of people have been out in the streets. Um, so uh, we've got this very controversial, uh, the police crime sentencing and courts bill, courts bill. Right, 317 or three, 311 pages of uh, changes in laws coming in, and uh, I'm not qualified to make this, um, but it's basically stopping the right of protest, stopping uh, the last pillar of democracy, which is that we can take to the streets. Uh, and uh, we've got tonight uh, two people who know all about this, who are going to give us a, a lot more detail. Uh, we've got uh, Tim Crossland from uh, Plan B. And we've also got Paul Stevens, who is a former Met Police officer, who is our police liaison in Exile. Welcome. Thank you guys for joining us. Hey, good evening. Hi, everyone. So, the sound quality for me is really bad. It's a bit Dalek-y. Is there anything that can be done about that? Anything I can do? Can you hear me? Yeah, well, you're, you're actually saying... You sound, you sound really good to me, and uh, I'm loving the curtains, so you're, everything's good. You sound good, Paul. It's good. Yeah. You sound good. Looking good. Oh, we've just lost Paul. He's just... Uh, yeah, yeah this, oh, oh, he's back again. If, if we, can hear, we, we can hear you okay, Paul. Yeah. So, so it's back. good. Uh, have a little so, chat then. So thank you guys for joining us. Um, now, we're no experts in law, um, but Tim, perhaps you could let us know a little bit more about this bill, what the proposed changes are, and a bit of a snapshot for us to understand more the, the concerns, really, of this potential bill, if it were to be passed as is. So I think the first thing to say is it introduces a new offence of, of nuisance, a statutory offence of public nuisance, based on a view that protesters are causing harm with a maximum sentence of 10 years in imprisonment. So essentially what we find is, is on the statute books, we're going to treat, as Priti Patel said, um, um, after the Broxbourne press protest, 
we're going to treat these people as organized criminals, peaceful protesters. So that is what we've got in this bill. Um, we've got various other measures to uh, uh, reduce the ability to, to protest peacefully. Um, more or less, it allows uh, the police to impose uh, conditions that limit a protest to exactly how they want it to be, where they want it to be, when they want it to be. Um, so it's a coach and horses through the right of, of ordinary people to protest against injustice. Wow. And and so, what 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 you're saying, right? For the just for the layman or women among us here, is there's 311 pages of changes that are coming in, and it's it's stopping our is it stopping our rights to protest? Are we still allowed to protest? Or is the fines just bigger? Or is it, you know? It, it's severely limiting and eroding the rights so that they become almost meaningless at the same time as criminalizing people on the basis of disruption i mean so so this is um yeah it's taking advantage i mean a lot of people would see this as taking advantage of everything that's happening in covid to rush through draconian authoritarian powers um when what we really want to be seeing from our governments and governments around the world is facing up to the real crises that we face not penalizing the people who are, are calling for action and Paul, and what's your view on it? Um, being a Met Police officer, a uh, former Met Police officer yourself, how has it made you feel reading it? Um, well, reading it, it's I've experienced in the last year when we have not been focusing on disrupting the public. We've been focused on government departments yeah, that are not doing their job with regard to the climate. Uh, emergency and and corporations that are polluting the planet so um, the whole when the HMRC sorry HMIC FRS bit of a mouthful um, wrote their report which underpinned these this new legislation um, they, they made the point that we have a right to protest and they can't ban it so they made that point they also made the, the point that um, the police have not been using their ability to um, crack down on protests or, or move the, the balance um, if protests intend on causing disruption. Now, we, for a year, we haven't intended to cause disruption. We've been, we wanted to protest, um, but it hasn't been disrupting the public. And, and I've been doing a liaison in all and just pulling my hair out because each time we go to the police and we tell them, you know, we, we want to do this, we want to work with you, we, we want you to help to facilitate the protest, which is your duty, um, then they've said, oh, great, yeah, yeah, that sounds fine, that sounds fine. And at the last minute, they put on a section 14. So there's been no, and, and the actual HMIC FRS have said, protests groups should talk to, their, should talk to the police and discuss um, safety for protesters and also an acceptable level, level of disruption. Now, we've tried to do that over the last year. Before September, we had four meetings, an hour-long meetings with the police um, to give you know, descriptions of the protests and, um, and give, get some idea from them because we didn't want a section 14. We wanted to be based in Parliament Square, go home at night time and not disrupt the public in any, in any big way, you know, maybe a procession or two. And, um, and they just said, we'll get back to you, we'll get back to you. The night before the, the, the rebellion, they slapped on a section 12 and a section 14 and they were out there in their hundreds the following day you know so this this really i find it embarrassing when our, when they have a choice to work with a protest group and see it in context of the reason why you're there and this happened last night of course they had the opportunity to discuss um, with reclaim the streets you know why how they could do it in a safe way with regards to covid and um, with no disruption and, and they just didn't do it. They chose not to do it. They chose the enforcement angle and the enforcement role, which is heavy handed. And it just, I just feel embarrassed every time I see that. It shows a lack of intelligence, um, not understanding the context of a protest. And I mean, in, in some ways, you're going to get more confrontation. And with these, um, uh, with, with these proposed, uh, that are coming in it, it it's you're going to see more and more more and more confrontation they're not it's not going to be suppressed 
people have to stand up. And I've, I've just seen an interview with, uh, what's his name, Clifford, Clifford Stock, who's professor of social psychology um, at Keele University. And, and he said exactly, exactly that, that we as society need to stand up to these attacks on our rights um, to assemble and express our political uh, opinions peacefully and that's the whole thing this ho this whole uh, this whole um massive piece of legislation attacks peaceful protests the 1986 piece of legislation it attacks violent protests and disorderly protests um and maybe serious disruption but the reason why the police find it difficult to use against us is because we're peaceful and that is how it should be that's what they can't understand, you know, and, and what really upsets me and embarrasses me about the Met Police is that when they feel that they're not in total control, that's when they get insecure and then over-police it and then overstep the law as well, you know, use the law, the law wrongly. And often that's why they don't take it to court because they know they're going to they're gonna be found out. And um, yeah, this, this I find embarrassing as an ex-police officer. Yeah, and just from my own personal experience, I was arrested under the COVID regulations. I was charged with an unlawful charge. So when I got to court, the Crown Prosecution had to drop my case because they tried to charge me with a charge that was found unlawful last April. So they're, not, they're more than happy to waste the court's time. They're more than happy to not actually know the law themselves. Um, and sorry, from my personal point of view, I'm more than happy if they want to waste my time doing so. I will be sitting in a cell if they want to treat me unlawfully and I will speak out about that as well. Um, and I just want to bring in as well, I was down in Clapham. I'm a 33 year old woman. I spent 27 years of my life in that area. I grew up in Wimbledon and last night was absolutely horrific. The police came in uh, during the vigil, um, after about 45 minutes of it, with their body cams on, intelligence gathering. Um, there weren't many police around at the start. It was very uh, kind of peaceful uh, and along in with the mood. And then the police just brought in tens of very aggressive male police. The, these male police officers were walking up to females and telling us to go home aggressively and not even giving us any space to do so and then we had female officers telling us we needed to leave for our own safety and I can only take that as my own safety from those police officers especially given the case and in that note I do just want to bring it back to the original thing of why we were there last night in memory of Sarah Everand who was murdered on the 1st of March. Yeah, yeah. absolutely on, 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 on that issue of which and the COVID fines, because last night they were they were giving COVID fines and arresting people for COVID. And I know you've been arrested for COVID. I've been fined live streaming by myself in total isolation for COVID regs. Um, oh, and I, uh, I was actually arrested by the police jumping in front of me when I was walking away from them. So I was unlawfully arrested, arrested having live streamed. Mm -hmm. That was my I, I, actually, I, was, I actually saw that as well. I was actually there, you know, right behind you when it happened. So it was like absolutely shocking. I, I just want to ask Tim: this this, this nurse got fined ten thousand pounds for organising a, you know, a protest, which was uh, it's about pay, and it was socially distant. They were, um, you know, obviously knowing uh, every single uh, PPE and health and safety regulation that you need to to do to actually operate safely and the most horrendous year that they've had and um, and what 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 do you just what, what do you make of this so I, I just see it in the same context as the wider issues that have brought us to this this moment where we have all these crises facing society we've got this crisis of inequality which covid has made so much worse and we've seen how billionaires have been doubling up on their profits while nurses on the front line are being offered below inflation pay rises. We have the crisis of racism, which brings people onto the streets and brings Black Lives Matter onto the streets. We have the crisis of our planetary emergency, and we have an epidemic of violence against women, and all of these things are interconnected. They're all the symptoms of a violent extractivist system. 
And the only answers we're seeing from those in power are to repress those who call attention to what's going on. And so this is all part of the same thing. There is no political imagination left in the political class. There's nothing left for them to do apart from silence those who draw attention to the crises that we all know that we're facing, even those in power understand it. And so that is what makes them illegitimate and that is what justifies the rebellion. And we are here and, to and tell the truth. We will not be silenced. So it doesn't matter how they change these laws. What we are doing is right. As peaceful protesters, we are just pointing out what needs to be done for us to have a future, for our kids to have a future, for this planet to exist in 200 years' time as it is. That's all we are doing. So, yeah. so I'm just, really just, I, I just want to say, Tim, this, 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 this whole issue, though, is, you know, all, all the, what you've just mentioned there and the, the bigger, wider picture and this 311 pages of arcane laws that are coming in to suppress the, the population. And, we, and we've just witnessed that, like, and Shell's been on the front line yesterday witnessing, and again today, you know, and, we, you know, we've got this government who their own committee on climate change are talking about that we're head, heading towards 3.5 degrees of warming. The, the UK military have brought out a report preparing for war because of like uh, shortages, uh, because of like, uh, because of climate. You know, and, 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 and I know you, 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 you've been, uh, you know, so, you know, who, who, is, who, who is the criminal here? You know, in your, in your opinion as a, as a legally trained barrister, you know, if you were lo looking at this, and, and also Paul, you know, you, you're looking at the evidence here, is like we're, we're seeing crimes getting committed by the state. Well, exactly, because you, you just look at the evidence on this and it's, it's very easy, it's very simple. We've got the government saying, this is a crisis. This is a planetary crisis. We've had Boris Johnson addressing the UN Security Council, saying this is a threat to national and international security. Yet we've got that same government willing to open a new coal mine until pressure gets to them, expanding carbon infrastructure all over the country, not just the airports, the 27.5 billion road building program, cutting aid to the most vulnerable communities in the world in the midst of this crisis and yet claiming to be climate leaders and you put that under scrutiny that's not just criminal it's treasonous and i don't mean treasonous in the rhetorical sense that people find you know understandably um you know it's overexcitable. it's associated with some politics that people want to distance themselves from i mean it in a strict legal sense treason is a crime that threatens the security of the state whereas an ordinary crime threatens an individual. If we've got a situation where the government recognises that this is a crisis that threatens the security of the state, yet does those exact things that pours petrol on the flames and lies to the citizenry, that is treason, because they are knowingly undermining the security of, of both this nation and the international community. So we've got to call that for what it is. And, and as I said, that is what legitimizes the rebellion. There are states around the world that say where a government fails to keep serving the interests of its people, it ceases to be legitimate. And there is then a duty on people to rebel, to take back control of the political process. It is criminal to allow that to carry on. You become complicit in it. So that is where I think we are. Bye. Thank you guys so much. Do uh, Paul, would you like yeah. to add anything? Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's very difficult to follow that. I mean, that's, I was going to mention the, um, the new public nuisance that, that's in this bill actually fits what the government are doing very well, although it's not in yet. Um, but being treasonous is, is much more fitting, really, because it's such, such an epic proportion. I mean, the new, the new public nuisance um, act says, or within the bill, says that um, if, if anyone does an act um, or omits to do an act um, that causes serious harm to the public or a section of the public, then that's public nuisance. That's the most serious level of public nuisance. And you could say, that if, you level that, if you have a look at the government, they're doing it all the time. They're omitting to, to deal with the climate emergency 
and they're doing stuff which makes it worse, you know? So, um, but I much prefer trees, and I think that's, that's great. And, and it's in already, whereas we've got to wait for this one to get in to use it. Um, but, I mean, one of the things that really um, worries me is the statutory instruments bit in this bill. I don't know if you've seen it, Tim, but um, it basically allows Pretty Patel to sign amendments with statutory in instruments to this bill once it's in. And then, so she can change it. She can make it more draconian without it going to Parliament for a debate. And, and that, that is really scary. That's the foothills of fascism, as I heard today. Um, you know, if you're trying to slip that in, that they can make amendments and tighten it up and turn the screw. I mean, that has to be resisted. Yeah, and I think as well, we need to make a very good point of uh, Pretty's bringing into the mix a new term, aggravated ag activists. If it weren't for the aggravated activists of the past, Pretty Patel wouldn't be where she was today. So there's a very good point, as Chris and Dick as well. These women would not be where they were today if it weren't for aggravated activists, as they'd like to call us. Well, it's funny how we've been called many things, haven't we? We're organised crime group. Um, we're eco-terrorists, um, we're, what are, what are we, extremists. And I think you came with me, Tim, to speak to Prevent last year uh, when they were concerned that young people in XR were being radicalised and that's why they included us on the Prevent literature, which was then taken off after our complaint. Um, but we had to put forward the fact that, you know, when young people are surrounded by people dedicated to non-violence, then that's probably the best place for them to be and the most non-radicalising um, environment for them, them to be in. But you imagine young people who have just seen their education completely screwed, um, who are, are paying for a university place that they're not at because they're at home and they're not allowed to go. And then they come out of lockdown and a policeman says, yeah, I know you're, you've, you've witnessed all this stuff that the government are doing, screwing up your future, uh, affecting your food and your water in the future. Um, I know I can understand you've got a right to protest, but can you please do it in the park over there and uh, make sure you, there aren't too many of you and keep your noise down? You know, that's, that's basically what this is going to do. And imagine what kind of radicalising effect that's going to have on young people that feel that frustration when they come out of lockdown. I mean, that's... They are just not thinking ahead. They do not think about the social consequences of what they're doing. Yeah, it's just absolutely shocking, you know. So, yeah, T Tim, you know, what, uh, what this? on labels and just remembering, and this is just a bit of our recent history, where that label extremism rebellion came from, because this was between. The, the, the April Rebellion and the October Rebellion, it came from the think tank in inverted commas policy exchange. And um, what later came to light was that policy exchange received funding from the fossil fuel industry. So we have this whole shift in the politics around protest that is sparked by a think tank that's funded by the fossil fuel industry. When that information comes to light, Nobody reports it, nobody publishes it. So that's still treated as if it were a properly independent report. So again, what we're seeing from our, the, the history of our rebellion is how it exposes the dynamics that are going on in society. And we, we've seen, as Paul says, you know, the history of using language to marginalize groups and to pave the way for oppressive action against them. There's a grim history behind that. And so we should all be, yeah, really on our guard. But I do just want to yeah. make one added point. We are a non-violent direct action movement. We believe in peaceful, non-violent protest. We will continue because the truth needs to be told. The government inaction on climate ecological emergency is catastrophic now. We are very lucky in this country that, I mean, we've already got floods. We've already seen the impacts in this country, but not on, to the extent the Global South has. And we in the Global North are the ones that have caused this problem that we are seeing. Um, the effects of already in the global south. So we will not be silenced and we will continue on with nonviolent direct action. Yeah. I, I, I think uh, we, we should actually have uh, another just dedicated talk instead of a roundup to this because 
you know, 311 pages of new laws coming in and we're only just scratching the surface and we're talking about 55 Thuffman Street, about these think tanks that actually influence government, uh, you know, who's actually in control, how they're able to actually put these bills in place. Uh, what you've just said there, I, you know, about Priti Patel being able to actually have these draconian laws to actually change the law once the law's in place, you know, is it, this is like, it's just absolutely kind of terrifying of watching our democracy erode around us, you know, so, um, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, let, let's, let's uh, arrange another uh, call soon and, um, yeah, we need to go into like a lot more detail on this, but uh, and, and as Shell said, like, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's not going to stop because the ecological and climate emergency is continuing and accelerating and, you know, we, we, we need to actually do something about it because our governments are failing us. I do just so, have uh, one more thing I wanted to add as well. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Zara Sultana tweeted earlier today, I was always going to vote against the police crime sentencing and courts bill amongst much else, it tax the right to protest. But because women held defiant vigil at Clapham Common yesterday, Labour will now vote against it too. Don't underestimate the power of protest. So there you go, we've even got Sara Sultana, the MP, calling it out the brave women and courageous women that went down and had to witness uh, last night with me. It does work. Nonviolent direct action does work. We are speaking the truth and it needs to be told. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, before uh, we, we continue with the roundup, is there uh, anything you just want to say before we uh, finish? Just, just one really positive thing that I think is coming out of this, Bill. And that is that by um, targeting all those demanding racial justice and explicitly targeting Black Lives Matter, by targeting um, nurses demanding fair pay, by targeting people demanding uh, you know, a future for ourselves, for the global south, for our children, um, and by targeting those taking a stand for, for Sarah Everard, what they are doing is reminding us all of the interconnection between our causes. And that is really powerful because when we stand on the streets together, and we definitely will be <laughs> because we're not going to stop, that is the moment people are going to have to take notice. Amazing. Thank you very much. And, and, and Paul? Yeah, I think it's just, I mean, one of the reasons you, you can see it with Trump as well is the, the deception and the lies that are being told to the public about the climate emergency, about lots of things, about everything. Um, and, and our government was, you know, very much following the Trumpian um, methods of lying to the people. Um, but I think one thing that is going to, even though we're not, the, apparently we're not very popular as a protest group, you know, because we sit in the road. But I think one thing that's going to clock with people is that we tell the truth. We have been consistent from the first day the first person sat in the road. We have been consistently telling the truth and we consistently tell the truth to power. Um, without any regard for our own freedom. And I think that is really powerful. And even, even the most Tory voter will be able to see that. You know, it will sink in eventually that we are being consistent and we are telling a message and we're not doing it to please anyone. We're not doing it to be popular. Thank you both so much. Really appreciate you both joining us this evening. And so we're going to move on now to... Oh, thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. We're going to move on now to a nice inspirational story and a catch-up from something that happened 10 days ago. So now we've just been speaking about this, Bill. We're very aware as activists that we are going to be facing uh, harsher sentences, perhaps, but that doesn't stop many of us. And we've got an inspirational story. So 10 days ago, Tracy and Bells, a mother and a teacher, um, oh, and the other way around, uh, Bells is a teacher, Tracy's a mother, uh, acted in contempt of court and was sentenced to 14 days in prison. And we're just going to zoom back so that you can have a quick reminder of what they did in the courtroom uh, two Fridays ago. Right. Can you stop right. filming now? Stop the filming now. now we've got I'm sorry, I'm not going to stop. Right. My hand is glued to this banner. The banner that I've got in court today says the courts are killing less. This court is complicit with the UK government on failure to act around the climate emergency. You are criminalising people who are trying to protect the earth. The magistrates repeatedly say to activists coming against, coming up for trial, that there's no place for science in the courtroom. 
and they do this by refusing to hear the argument of necessity. Well, necessity means an imminent threat to life, and that is exactly where we're at now. This deadly pantomime is breaking my heart. Our establishments are facilitated social murder. I can't understand why we can't protest a corrupt, lost government in Parliament Square. I'm glued on. I'm glued on. I've heard you judge, Your Honour. You are indeed firm but fair. But I've also heard you say, I'm glued on, that you can't tell the truth, you can't see what you really think, and we must, we must. I'm glued on. You're glued on, yeah? I'm glued on. Brave woman that's been with me today, who also had a banner from the public gallery that said, the courts are killing us. So yeah, Tracy and Bells came out on Thursday. Virgil, I mean, how courageous of these two women. They're just fantastic. Un unbelievable, so brave, so determined. You know, one, one of them's a mother with children uh, and is so committed and calling out the government, not even calling out the government, calling out the judicial system and the courts for what it is. And um, yeah, so brave. Really amazing and, what, I mean, they, you know, what they've done. Yeah, and they've stepped up. Um, they want to make it clear to people. They don't want to be seen as an inspiration. They are just showing people that they are a mother, they're a teacher, and they're standing up for the future of their children and their students and future generations. They're just normal people that are happy, well, not happy to, but are giving up our own freedoms. They're giving up their freedoms for future generations. So... You know, as a mother and as a, a teacher, if they can do it, you know, I think it's inspiration for a lot of us as well. Um, and on that note, we're going to just cut to a little video um, from uh, Bells outside the court. Oh, sorry, Tracy outside the courtroom, just with a message from her. Hello, I'm out of three. I can't wait to see my kids and talk to them and give them a big hug. Um, I want to say thank you to everybody who sent me emails when I'm in there. There were so, so many from all over the world. And, my oh gosh, emotional. it really, really helped um, to know that people care and that more of you are considering doing this. Um, it's essential. The bits of news that I saw when I was in there, this new news TV station come in, not giving the nurses the proper pay rise. I and mean, it's just bullshit upon bullshit. And... The whole time we're being herded to our deaths and my kids' pooches being stolen from them. So I'm fine. Um, it was, I won't say it was easy, but it certainly wasn't difficult. It's not as difficult as trying to live in this current system. And if you're considering doing this, get in touch with the disobeying the dog people. Let's talk about it before you go in. It, it really isn't that scary, you know, like superglue. My whole life I've been feared super blue and how bad it was and it's not and prison's not that bad either yeah. take your punishments and we'll wear them with pride and love and humor because we're not the ones in the wrong this system is killing us right it's stealing my kids future it's written off the global south so we all need to go the extra mile in in these days and and it's fine the food's quite nice <laughs> a huge huge thank you to tracy that's that's uh yeah and it's so true it's it's like you know it's it's they're following the science you know we're not the ones that are wrong and 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 hearing their their experiences the personal experiences is you know it's, it's great to hear you know what they've done and what they're doing and uh yeah a big thank you and um, we're just gonna cut to bells because we've got a message from bells from outside the prison on thursday And it was really fine, like once you get used to the routine and being locked and unlocked several times a day, um, it really was okay. I think just knowing that I was only doing seven days, um, yeah, made it very bearable. Um, I, it was so lovely, I want to say like huge thank you to everyone who sent in a message. It really made such a difference to receive them every day um, and yeah, just like to know that everyone's thoughts and like <laughs> and, um, yeah, everything that was sent in was just so, so wonderful, it like, means so much um, and yeah, it really helps me like pass the time with your lovely hair. Um, I, I feel like super lucky to be only doing seven days, like a lot of the women in there are on much longer sentences um, and I dread to think like the women on um, IPPs that might not know when they're going to be released. 
like I can't imagine the mind it takes to keep going when you're facing that um, and yeah I feel good about disobeying the dock um, and would encourage others to do similar if you feel cool to um, it's a really really powerful action so please do 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 as both of the women have said uh, get in contact with the Disobey and the Doc team if you are considering any form of contempt of court or going on remand as well, just so that you can speak to other people about their experiences in prison. And it was quite sweet actually when we met them from the prison. Bells came out with a bag, I hope she doesn't mind me saying this. I thought it was her emails, it was her compost. Bless her, had <laughs> brought her compost out. Um, but yeah, a huge, huge thank you to both of them and just to stress, um, you know, they are normal people and they've shown us they're two of ten people so far in Extinction Rebellion that have done uh, Disobeying the Dock or going on remand and we're extremely grateful and all of those people that are inspired, please join the calls. Um, there is a lot of support out there in preparation for it. And I'm going to hand over to Babel now for some news about some trees. Uh, yeah, and in the other news. So uh, last week we reported on the standoff that was happening in, in Wandsworth in South London. And uh, there's a big battle to save uh, one tree. There's 134 trees getting uh, chopped down for new development. And the kind of the, the prize tree in the middle is a uh, back poplar. And uh, it's been occupied for three weeks by uh, tree protectors. And they got a court case uh, on Friday saying that the tree um, uh, is going to be chopped down and uh, yeah and the tree surgeons moved in and uh, Vlad do you have the do you have the picture yeah and uh, all the local residents uh, all lined the save the tree uh, including local uh, celebrities uh, Bob Geldof was involved Judy Dench uh, Sting and, and his partner Trudy Steiner. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right and uh, yeah and the locals uh, a local uh, Wandsworth XOR got involved and uh, yeah just a real sense of community to save this this one tree that's like you know it's it's a beautiful tree and it had birds nesting in it and this lady in particular this local resident uh, decided to take direct action there's not part of XOR and when the tree surgeons came to cut the tree down she sat in front of the truck and blocked the truck with her two children and the reason she had her children with her she said you have to learn that like you have the right to protest and we need to bring the change uh, and and she sat there and because of this action and the pressure put on the tree surgeons they chopped half the tree down they started cutting it down and they actually quit they actually went off site and they told ones or council we're not going to do it so it looks like tomorrow morning there's a replacement coming in so it's unfortunate but a big shout out to everybody who's involved in the last couple of weeks thank you very much and, and just to uh, highlight, then... um, just... sorry, just to highlight, uh, there's lots of tree protections and uh, camps spurting up all over the place now. Um, can you tell us a bit more about this area? Because this area and this tree is in London, and yeah, yeah, I mean, they're just okay, taking so away our green it's, spaces. It's, it's... What we're seeing is we're seeing urban deforestation happening. Uh, across our towns and cities in, in the UK and, and also around the world. And we need to be protecting our mature trees because they give us uh, so much uh, wildlife. Um, they absorb vast amounts of uh, carbon and also air pollution, especially in like places like uh, in, in towns and cities across the country where people are dying because of uh, toxic air pollution. And it filters the air for us. And taking out no knocks and socks, these kind of like uh, air particles, um, yeah, there's so many uh, advantages of having mature trees, and what they're doing is they're chopping the trees down, and they're saying, but we're replacing them with these saplings, and we're going to plant more trees. The only problem is it takes it takes a very long time for a tree to become to a like mature or semi-mature, and you know uh, the question has to be asked: Do we need all this relentless, you know, new development having the rights over our nature? And we've seen it with HS2. We've seen it like in, in Islington with the new housing development uh, last month. We've seen the tree of the year getting cut down. So it's, it's actually happening around with this deforestation. And, you know, we all should be like highly aware of it and, and, and call, it out, call it out. Yeah, definitely. And also just to add to that as well, you uh, were bringing up about HS2. 
the fight against HS2 is still ongoing, unfortunately. There have just been some call-outs uh, for people to head down to Denham uh, camp, so please do continue following HS2 Rebellion and Stop HS2 for more information and updates, because daily they're in need of assistance and peaceful protesters. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for that. Thanks for that. And continuing on in our other news, so I'm going to hold this up. A lot of people would have received a letter in the post very recently uh, about the census that happens once every 10 years. They're talking about actually doing another one in five years' time because of COVID. And uh, we're asking everybody, when you're filling uh, your form in, you've got an option of putting in uh, what religion you are. And you go scroll down the bottom and there's a box that says other. And if you tick that, uh, we're asking people to put in climate concerned. So we want to get the uh, the religion of the climate concerned people uh, registered and acknowledged. And we want to see how many climate concerned people there is around the country. So if you're filling it in, please, you know, go to the bottom, uh, click uh, other, put in climate concerned. And also tell your friends and family and spread the word. Let's get more people involved. Brilliant. It will be, was it the 2001 census with the Jedi? Wasn't it? Jedi was a religion in 2001. So we can have climate concerned so, as a religion this year. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, a couple of reminders. Uh, we've got um, uh, we've got training coming up next week um, for part of, it was going to be part of the uh, Rebellion of One. We've got a new date. So the Rebellion of One now is on the 1st of May. So it gives everybody a bit more time to prepare. Uh, but we're doing our own preparation and we're teaching people how to use smartphones for making uh, uh, videos. So if you want to do some, we've got training on the 18th and the 20th of March. Uh, there's click in the link. There's a, you can just fill in the email, send us an email, and we'll send you the link to the training. Um, and uh, yeah, and also we're ac asking people in the regions if you've got any live streams that you want to share. Uh, please also like you know put in the email contact us we want to kind of you know get this uh, get this going a little bit more brilliant and some other things then so as i mentioned earlier the cee bill cee bill banner drop day is on the 26th of march so please do get involved with that um around the uk we've also got the global Re money rebellion wave starting on the 1st of april Links will be in the description, uh, in the comments below to all of these actions. And on the 30th of April is Peace Day of Anti-War Resistance. The International Solidarity Campaign will run from the 1st to the 30th of April. And we're inviting everyone globally to get involved from home, including making origami lotus flowers. So you'll find out some more details and there's going to be a lot more information released over the next few days about that too. Amazing. Okay, so everybody, check the links, uh, see what you can get involved in. You know, uh, what you've seen tonight is the most inspirational people, ordinary people like you, uh, taking extraordinary actions, and it just shows that we can all do this. You know, so let's let's you know, let's 2021 is such an important year. We really have to send a really loud, clear message to the UK government uh, with their climate talks. We've, we've got oh. <laughs> That's amazing. I wish I had. I'm, I'm, I'm jealous now. I want to get one of those tops. And uh, yeah, we're all about peaceful protests, you know. So uh, do what you can. Get involved. Click on the links, um, you know, and share. Please share this video to you know want more people to know about it and get involved. Uh, and uh, yeah, Shell, thanks tonight. Uh, you know, it's been it's been fun co-hosting again. Thank you too. It's nice to spend time with you today. And thank you guys amazing. so much for tuning in. Please do check out the links that are in the comments and please do share the video too. Okay, and to and to finish up, um, Director Vlad is going to play a, a video about the Rebellion of One and stay tuned uh, for our next uh, roundup. Till then, thank you. I'm terrified. The forests are burning. I'm terrified. The governments are lying. I'm terrified that crops are failing. I'm terrified that fossil fuels are burning. I'm terrified that cities are flooding. Change is now. This spring.
hundreds of people across the country terrified for the future of people and the planet will take action alone together will you be a bystander rebellion of one